This is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Daryl. Hello. Hey, Christian. How's it going? It's going pretty well. And Daryl, for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Uh, my name is Daryl Labar. My tagline is Daryl Always Raising Labar. I uh, had oh. a wonderful coworker that 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 bequeathed that to me on some company meeting one time. It's like, hey, this is Daryl Always Raising I was like, that's great. I never even thought about that. So <laughs> that's, uh, that special thanks awesome. to... Good brand. Brandon McGann, if you ever if you ever listens to this, but um, <laughs> uh, so that's who uh, it's my name at least. Uh, I'm uh, currently in Fishers, Indiana, which is just outside of Indianapolis, um, which is right next to Carmel, Indiana, which is actually the roundabout uh, capital of the northern the North American continent. Uh, I don't know if uh, you knew that, but oh, oh um, okay. So uh, Carmel has I think 165, 175 roundabouts or something ridiculous. Wow. Um, so it's kind of an unusual. Uh, Unusual, if, uh, if you there. like roundabouts, I think that's a great thing. I love roundabouts versus yes. lights, but some people, uh, every person that is near the area that doesn't go there is like, this is a bad idea. But every person that lives in the area is like, this is awesome. We love it. It, so, it is yeah. fantastic. And yeah. I should also point out that if they're putting a roundabout in your neighborhood, if there's a traffic cam, watch that for the first few weeks. Because that's at the beginning when it's new, that's when you start to see like the truck not paying attention going up over the middle and all the. Uh, so if you're into that kind of stuff out on YouTube, <laughs> fi follow the traffic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I do. I watch lots of videos and oh, lots of uh, lots of interesting things. I like learning. And one of them was a, a guy in traffic stuff. And you know, he usually is in California or whatever. Talk about the interstate here or there. And then he spent two episodes this last week, two weeks, entirely on Carmel, Indiana. I was like, hey, I've been there. I drive around that. I've been that place. So it was it was interesting to 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 see that. So that's yeah, kind of funny. <laughs> and so what do you, what do you do? What does your business do? Yes. Um, so I have been working for myself. For, uh, um, my business is called Gap Integrity. Uh, I haven't ever actually, I bought the domain for the website, but I've never actually created a website because I've always had work to do. And so I was like, well, I've got stuff I need to do rather than like advertising stuff. So um, yes. So, but I am a long time Microsoft, uh, formerly CRM, but Dataverse Power Platform developer. Um, got my start way back in the day with VP6, uh, uh, right out of college, and then I started working .NET, and then I got transferred over to a, or I took a job at a consulting company, and they said, hey, we need to learn, uh, we need someone to learn CRM. Would you be interested in doing that? I was like, sure. So that was in December of 2011. So it was a CRM4 to 2011 migration project, and I've been on the Dataverse CRM power platform ever since, both model-driven and Canvas apps. So Very cool. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I went to work. I left Microsoft in 2009. I went to work for a little company that had dynamics, uh, you know, like everything. It's all automated. Mm -hmm. It was cool. Uh, then we got acquired uh, less than a year later by a company that was all Salesforce. And so that was my only window into like you actually using day in, day out, and uh, you know, the Microsoft technology. And I know it's changed a lot since 2009, early 2010. Yes. A lot of stuff has changed and some stuff hasn't changed at all. So that's good. Uh, I, I, I don't tend to do well with having to learn everything brand new. Um, and so, you know, having the same basic plugin structure since 2011, the same interface you're working against and implementing uh, makes that life a whole lot easier. But then there's everything else under the sun has changed with it though. So you get, you get the best of both worlds. <laughs> you get some stuff that stays and some stuff that changes. I always like to ask, uh, like Daryl. So you've been, you're an eight-time. Hopefully, the world, like the, the, it's coming up on us. The, uh, in fact, by the time this goes live, we should have just heard whether we got renewed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But uh, so you've been for a while. But I always like asking people about their origin story. So, how did you become an MVP? How did you hear about it and get involved? Yeah. Um. So, uh, hearing about it was uh, listening to um some podcasts uh the crm audio podcast specifically um and that's really kind of funny because the, the guys that are on that podcast i always listen to them at 2x and so when i met them in real life in person at mvp summit when i became mvp i was like why are you talking so slowly i was like, oh yeah because i'm used to just hearing you in 2x <laughs> yeah, all the time. Yeah. so that's kind of funny so that's how i first started what is an mvp i because i didn't even know what it was um and i uh, got in contact with a couple other mvps and uh i i liked teaching people. And so I was um, always kind of uh, showing people stuff. And um, primarily my, my, I guess, first foray into the community was 
uh, way back in the day, uh, NDP uh, was creating a, a toolbox, a, a open source platform for people to use tools in the, in the CRM dynamic space. And I was one of the first people to create a tool for it, a plugin for it. And uh, I happened to create two of them. And I realized there's a lot of duplicate code. So I wrote a big blog post about, hey, this is how you could, if you're going to write these things, use this base class. It helps simplify stuff. Mm -hmm. And I shared it with him. And he is like, hey, that's great. Can I use that? And I was like, sure. So uh, he took my basic base class. And that's still the same class that's been used by well, probably 200 different plugins uh, since then uh, in that excellent tool uh, toolbox. So uh, yeah, that, that was kind of my first foyer into that. But um, yeah, I don't know. You, you never know exactly what it is that that uh, you do that gets you over whatever the hump is from non-MVP to MVP, but it that's right. It my... It's a black box from Microsoft. Yes. I mean, ultimately yep. they decide and it's different for everybody, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're not an MVP, like you're doing everything. Um, and after a couple of years, I'm like, you know, what, where is my most, where, where am I most benefiting the community? Where are my hours best spent? Where's my, and, and where are my energies best spent? And so, you know, I could, I could spend days and days writing blogs, um, but I don't think that's really, I'm not going to be that good at, as other people, I'm not going to write interesting stuff or, or whatever. Every now and then something interesting would come up and I'll write a blog about it, but that's not where, that's not where the community, where I can bring value to the community, creating tools, sharing that knowledge, speaking, those are areas that A, I enjoy, uh, and maybe that's why I'm good at it, but B, I feel like I'm good at it as well. So yeah, so those are the things that, uh, that I hope keep on keep me in the MVP community going forward is, is uh, creating tools, giving that away and sharing information with people. So, yeah. I think that that's one of the, you bring up a good point, uh, uh, you know, that you have to find the thing that you enjoy doing and mm -hmm. surface that the right way. Um, and, and so, you know, conversations that I've, so I, I'm part of a, a, a mentoring group that two, uh, you know, fellow MVP, Sharon Weaver and I started. Um, we're also both regional directors uh, so we're very involved with Microsoft in different levels, but around community is to help people that are interested in becoming an MVP is they can come join our monthly call and ask questions and we share, you know, guidance and stuff around that process. But we've actually had some people that have said, you know, hey, I realize now this is not for me because mm -hmm. to do the types of content, the contributions to the community, they're like, yeah, I, I really don't enjoy blogging or speaking or doing all the other things. And they said, you know, I would have to go too much out of my, my comfort level, you know, for that. And I'm like, it's great that they're able to self-identify that yeah. and be yeah. like, Hey, it's not for me. Cause you could be active in the community and networking and doing all, getting all the benefits of that without being an MVP, of course, but it does open up a lot of doors, but it's doing those things, which you enjoy. I often say that all the stuff that I'm doing, all the blogging, the speaking, organizing stuff, part of my user group, you know, board, my, all those things, regardless of the status. Like I was doing it before I was an MVP. I'll do it after I'm an MVP because yep. I enjoy it. Those are my hobbies. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, uh, oh no, if I'm not an MVP. Then I get to not do this anymore. It's like, well, I, I would do it anyway. I don't, well, yeah. Well, you could technically, and people yeah. don't understand that too, is that it's an award for what you did in the year behind. Yeah. So you actually could stop doing stuff and people yeah. have changed roles and stopped and then they yeah. lose their MVP, uh, you know, yeah. they don't get renewed, but yeah. you still got the award for what you did. Yeah. Yep. And, and even with that, I mean, my, my, the number of contributions I do have decreased significantly since I started working for myself. Cause I just had less, less hours available for doing things. Mm -hmm. So I try to be purposeful in what I'm doing and maximizing it. But at the same point in time, it, maybe it's not enough. I don't know. And, and that's, that's okay. If that happens and then, you know, it was great while it lasted and, and uh, I will probably just continue with my pace that I'm doing, but um, yeah, maybe it might spur a little bit more of maybe do a little bit more, but I, I don't, I don't see it. I, you know, you always have priorities of, yeah. of what you're doing and, and uh, I, and I really want to keep those priorities where they're at. And I feel comfortable with that. And, and it, if that's what it is. That's what it is. And again, for folks that are interested in, in learning more about the MVP program, it's like, it, it, it's not, you know, it's not about volume of, of activities. Like there's, no. there's some of us, like I was telling you about, my, like I'm closing in on three years of daily blog posts, like, but I'm insane. So um, <laughs> like, it, don't, don't try yes. and replicate. Don't look at any one individual and the high volume that they're, they're doing and think, Oh, I need to go and do that thing. I mean, Microsoft, really is more focused on the things that you are doing, the quality of those things, yeah. how much of an impact it has on the community. So yeah. around that, Daryl, like what, what are your hot topics? What are you passionate about right now that you're talking on, writing about? Uh, I, I'm always, I'm always deeply passionate about anything deeply technical. 
Um, and so, uh, I, even this morning, I, I probably spent 30 minutes, uh, before I got out of the bed, just chatting through on a uh, discord channel about, you know, how would you, how would you organize your plugins for, for Dataverse? How would you go through and set up early bound for this? Um, how would you do all that kind of stuff? So tools that I've made, um, and, and sharing that with the community and making sure that, that people are taking advantage of that, um, is, is key too, because I'm like, you know, don't. You learn from my mistakes, a, but even better, learn from what I what I'm trying to give you, um, and grow from that. I I do a, I do a, uh, oh, I do a presentation called uh, "All Your Plugin Base Are Belong to Us," which is a playoff of the "All Your Base Belong to Us" meme. Turn it, you're and, aging us though. Yes, that original yes. Meme was that? That was like '90s, wasn't it? I don't know. It's a Nintendo game from who yeah. knows when. So, right. so yes, but yeah, yeah, it's it's there. So, um, yeah, but I I'm like, hey, this is like over a decade worth of experience I have working in this technology, I'm trying to give it to a way so that you can go, oh, this is great. I want to use it at no matter what level you're at. Here's things you shouldn't do. Here's things you should do. Take what I have and copy and paste it. I don't care. Like it's, it's, I would, nothing would please me more than I walk into a project and go, oh, someone's using something that looks like they copied and pasted it from me. That's awesome. Like that would, that would be great. I, I mean, I would prefer if you actually just referenced it and that way you, any changes I make, you get to use. Yeah. But I, I'd much rather you do that than do nothing at all. Um, and so if it's easier just to copy and paste, I sure go ahead. Doesn't bother me one mind. I'm not gonna be like, why, why? That's like, cool. I can't believe they did that. I don't know why they didn't like reference it and then get updates for it automatically, but Hey, awesome. They're used to it. So I'm happy. Yeah. You know, th there's something to be said about that every once in a while. I mean, there, there have been, um, I mean, there's still some sites out there that will, Mm -hmm. um, that we're going in and not citing the work of others pulling in and like republishing on their site. Like, Hey, look at this solution like that. That's just, you know, that that's, that's unethical. It's just, it's fraudulent. Like they're some, promoting a business, promoting other people's, but, but I have people like all the time reaching out and be like, Hey, could I quote you from this, your blog post? I'm like, like, technically you don't even need to ask for that. Just properly cite my work. Yeah. And well, it's, yeah, even with the licensing I have, I, I don't even require that because it's just MIT license. You can do whatever, you, like, you don't have to do it. Now, common courtesy would be probably A, nice, and B, more likely just to know, hey, has this been updated? Maybe I need to go back to the source and see if it's been updated. But almost everything that I provide is, yeah, a way for you to use it, consume it. And, and uh, yeah, I, you, don't, you, you don't have to use it. Like, I, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. If you're standing on top of me, I'm more power to you. I'm so happy. Um, keep on going. But I think this is something that, you know, people need to understand too. It's like, it's, especially if you're trying to, I mean, there's a lot of power in uh, being in, 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 from a community standpoint in uh, properly, proper citations, referencing yep. the, the source material around that, at mentioning different people and things that are out there that influenced something you wrote, something you built and things that are out there. And again, maybe they, they'll, they may never respond to that. It's, it's fine. It's out there. You're not breaking any rules doing that, but no, but that's how you start to develop those relationships and yeah. make, make those connections. And if you don't care about becoming an MVP, it's not about being an MVP. It's that, yeah. you know, I, I'm also independent with my company. I've got a number of clients. I know that if there's a question that comes in that I can't answer, I know dozens of people that can, and I can yeah. then reach out to that network. So building that network, I mean, this is just a, I mean, it, that's why I, I love the, so much about the open source model and glad when Microsoft started making that shift and supporting getting more active. And, and yes, it still depends on the executive and the organization inside Microsoft mm -hmm. and how yep. you know open they are to open source. But you know, in the collaboration stack and the SharePoint teams like that world, I mean, they are very much embracing that the community side. And, and of course, you've got all the patterns and practices teams and the resources that are out there. And that's a place where anybody could go and utilize that. You don't have to be an MVP. You can go sit on those calls, learn from others, mm -hmm. and then, you know, you reuse the code, the patterns that are yeah. out there. The, you know, it, it's just a great way to learn. It's a great way to, to network. And then if you do have a desire to become an MVP, that's the great way to start it because you, you have to get somebody's attention. One of the reasons I started doing open source code was not to become an MVP. I just really hated writing resumes. <laughs> it's like, if my code is being used by somebody like at their company, like, that's like the best, that's better than any resume. Hey, you guys are using my code for this. Oh, we yeah. didn't know that. Like I was, I, I was hired on at a company um, before I started my own company, the last job I, I took, um, they, I was in charge of 20, 30 ish developers um, and keeping and and uh, 
giving professional insight and uh, technical insight and managing all these developers uh, across the, the country, I guess. And um, they didn't ask me a single technical question. <laughs> they didn't ask me, did I know what this was? Or that? They, they didn't because they knew who I was from, from all the stuff that I had been putting out there. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, that, that, that's, it was, I kind of had laughed them. I was like, you know, maybe should have at least checked on a little bit, but it is kind of, uh, even if you don't even want to become an MVP, if you hate writing resumes, just doing a lot of open source work is a great way to to get your name out there too and be able to have people, oh, I recognize you. So yeah. Well, that's also something for folks that don't know. Like even uh, like w when you say that, my first thought is just like, it's like, you really need a resume. My entire LinkedIn profile is just open. All the details yes. there. Like, <laughs> and so I do the uh, LinkedIn has the the resume yes. generator. Yep. You print out what's there. When people ask for that. That's what I do. Just and that, I just send them. I was like, it's all there with links to the companies with people. Like you could see references on there, you know, all that. But for folks that are involved in the projects, like you can actually add, and you see this all the time with people that are very active in the open source community is that they'll have their role, their title. I don't know if you have this on your profile, but you can actually then list the projects with links to uh, to mm. you know uh, GitHub and other places where you're you're active around that. So it, I mean, it just becomes that single place where you can go of all of your current and past you know history. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, it, it's I mean it's a great point. So then they could just focus. They just then focus on like the cultural fit aspects of the. Of the project or the role yeah that's that's really what it is who are you what are you like we you know what are you gonna be like in a situation how do you handle conflicts with this and the other thing and, and that type of stuff the 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 this kind of uh, those steps of conversations and then um and i always like to ask you know <laughs> what's the best and worst part of working at this company like that's always a, a good question i think everybody should ask them before they hire on somebody that way they can have an idea what do i need to care about does is it, is it be a big deal or not and then you know what do i have to look forward to and then same point is like, you know, what is it about, about me that scares you? What's, what are you most concerned about with me? And yeah, that's a valid concern or, you know, it's yeah. not a valid concern because X, Y, and Z. And what are you most excited about? Yeah, that's excited about too. Because if they're excited about something that I don't like doing, that's kind of a bad fit to begin an with, right? right? Yeah. 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 Or if they're really, yeah, go ahead. Which is how they respond to that question too. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we've all had those, if you've been working long enough, we've all been, uh, you know, I've hired and fired people. I've been hired and fired. I've like around that. If I had had a more open upfront relationship with a manager, with a, mm -hmm. a VP, whatever it is that I'm going to be working with. Um, if you ask a question like that and it, if they give you kind of the rosy, glossy, generic answer rather than, you know, give you any insights. I mean, that should be another red flag. Yep. It's uh yeah, if they can't say anything wrong to the company, like, uh there's probably uh, a lot of stuff that's wrong you know, right. or, or something, but yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. So uh, what are your, so in, in the community stuff, what are, what are your primary contributions? Like, so building the code, doing the things, are you out there speaking at events? Are you active in the user group kind of other stuff? What are your contributions? Yeah. So I do do um, some speaking, not a whole lot as much since COVID dry, uh, kind of dried up a lot of the speaking activities. Um, yeah. I will be speaking at the Microsoft Power Platform Conference in Las oh. Vegas here. Yeah. Um, so I did I did get in this year. I have been trying to get in for a couple Come of years. Come say hello. I, I will be there. We'll have to, All right. we'll have to meet yeah. up. I hate Vegas, yeah. but enjoy the, <laughs> the conference. Uh, I think the last time I was there was we were flying through from Mexico on my honeymoon. And we put five dollars in the vent in the I call it the vending machine, but in the uh, slot machine in the airport, and didn't win anything, and that was it. So yeah. uh, that was I think the last time I was in Vegas. That's a good. That's a very common, <laughs> appropriate experience for that. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I, I uh, had a, yeah. a dri driving through Nevada when I was a kid. I remember with my 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 aunt, we went into like a uh, like a Seven Eleven or something, and through driving through mm -hmm. Nevada, and she wanted to make a point of like why gambling is bad to the kids and we stood there and she put in a couple quarters and won like $500. <laughs> one spin. It's like bad, bad lesson, life yeah. lesson here. Well, I mean, like, yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> the odds are like four out of 10 that you're going to actually win. So like if you just randomly go up and try to teach somebody four out of 10 times, you're probably not going to be able to teach them because you're actually going to win. But yeah, right. the, yeah. So that's, that is, that, that, of course, that happens. And that, those are the stories you remember, though. That's biasing uh, coming into that that yeah. story too. But uh, other things I do, um, there's a really, really involved uh, Discord channel uh, called the Power Platform Level Up uh, channel, and that has oh, I don't know, about a hundred, hundred full, pretty much active users in there, um, and we ask so many questions, and I get so many answers, and give so many answers. It's just a really um, 
a great a community to be a part of. Um, so I spent a lot of time in there. Um, and I uh, used to do a product, whole lot of are Microsoft product team members on there as well. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, other MVPs and Microsoft, uh, um, That's great product members. Yep. Uh, are on there as well. So, so yes, uh, see a lot of activity in there and you get lots of interesting questions and answers you wouldn't get otherwise. And even some people that are on-prem like, oh yeah, that was like eight years ago since I last touched on-prem. So, okay. All right. Yeah. You do have that issue and, and kind of remembering some of those yep. memory lane trips are kind of fun too. So, <laughs> Well, that's, that's, that's great. I, I, that's what I always tell people is like, like, again, it goes back to, you know, where you're comfortable, do those things. There's, uh, I mean, there, there's no one way to contribute. And, and so finding those channels, those places you're most comfortable, it's about surfacing that information. It's why I asked, like, even if the, you said, no, there's no Microsoft people in there. It's like, well, the community is in there and active. It's looks like an opportunity for somebody, in the product team to come and get more involved in that. But it's a, uh, again, Microsoft watching you should not be the reason why you're contributing stuff. Um, oh yeah, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it, but it's great that there are so many you know avenues for getting out and sharing that. And uh, I think like like you, I learn so much by the questions that are asked. I may not always know the answer, but I follow the the conversation around things. I love the AMA style. Yeah, and there's various sites and communities where I go and uh, you know just to learn from you know, the, the, the var variations that are out there of any solution, just because there's so many different, you know, license types and scenarios and industry specific solutions for those. Um, one person can't know everything. So it is a constant learning opportunity. Totally. Well, Daryl, I really appreciate your time get you know, getting to know you. I, I will uh, look for you. We'll definitely have to connect <laughs> in, in Vegas in September. Uh, looking forward to that. But uh in the meantime, for folks that want to find out more about you, where are you most active in social? Where can people find you? Uh, finding me on LinkedIn is probably the easiest way. Uh, I'm using my name, Daryl Labar. I think it's fairly unique out there. Um, I'm also out on Twitter uh, or X Twitter, I guess. I don't. I refuse to call it X. Like Twix. Twix. I like X Twitter better. X Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as well. Um, and LinkedIn is entirely, entirely professional. Uh, X Twitter, you may get. I, I'm I'm a big football fan. I played football in college, and so oh. I, I do have some Colts stuff that I do, uh, Indianapolis Colts stuff that I do post on there. So you may get a little bit on there in, in Twitter, not a whole lot. My friend actually is uh, he is a reporter for the Colts, um, oh. for the Indianapolis Star. So I, I get a lot of inside information from him, and I I, I repost oh, some of his stuff cool. sometimes. So outside of that occasional non thing, it would just strictly be very uh, business specific stuff. Um, that I do that. So those are the two ways to to reach out and uh, any of my tools, they all are on GitHub and you can go and, and put comments and questions and issues in there as well. So, yeah. Excellent. Well, well, of course, I'll have links to all these profiles out on the blog and on buckleplanet.com as well as out on YouTube and on the podcast. So uh, definitely check it out. Reach out to Daryl Connect. As I always say that MVPs are the friendliest people in the world. Like we are super connectors so we're always happy to meet people and just mention where you heard about it when you saw them and and uh you know to put the the connections together but and i, I probably would be amiss to say make sure you check out my podcast the xrm toolcast with uh that former mvp now microsoft and microsoft employee scott Durow, and i uh, do things on tools and in, in the community so um tools and topics in the community so make sure you check that out as well on youtube as well as on podcasts so yeah I've got it in the list of the links, so we'll have it all there. So thanks cool. a lot, Daryl, for your time. Yep. All right. Good meeting you. Thank you, Christian. Bye.